five students and two professors were selected to travel almost 5,000 miles from Missouri to attend the Fourth International Conference on Communications and Media Studies in Bonn, Germany. This adventure not only challenged us to step out of our comfort zones, but forced us to face this crazy adventure head on. Our journey began in Springfield, Missouri, as we traveled to our first destination, Dublin, Ireland. We then made our way to Bonn, Germany, to present our research on our topic, this information. From exploring castles to navigating the Rhine River, we knew there was going to be a surprise around every corner. Here's how it happened. So initially when we landed, um, I was mostly excited just because of the temperature change. That was the first initial reaction because I love cold weather and it was in like the 60s and so all of us were just like, oh, this feels so nice. And you kind of step off the bus and you know that you're in a different place. Like the air is better. I'm convinced the air quality is better in Ireland. So that's when we got on the bus with Sean, and he was a hoot, <laughs> to say the least. And then we found our, our tour guide, Sean, and he thought we were a family. That was pretty funny. We had like a boost of energy, you know, we were excited for what the day was going to hold. So going to the Burr Castle was really fun because it fulfilled every expectation I had of what Ireland looked like. I loved the Burr Castle, it was gorgeous. And so we stepped up and there was, we just thought, like for myself, I just thought it was a castle and then we step inside and there's this huge greenery and there's like a greenhouse with flowers and succulents and then there's also a huge like pasture and river um, and different walkways. That estate is really cool because it's basically this privately owned estate by a very well-off family that maintains it and allows visitors to come and see it and so they live in the castle on the estate and they just have these beautiful gardens so that was just such a stark contrast from being stuck in a plane it was such a nice greeting to ireland the highlight of that estate for me um i was raised 21 years apart from a sibling, so I missed some really essential parts of my childhood, one of which was rolling down hills. This has been a lifelong dream for me to roll down a hill. And so, um, together with my comrades, at the Burr Estate, we found this perfect rolling hill, and just, we lined up, and on the count of three, we rolled down it, and I felt like a new person after that. I was changed. <laughs> I mean, the real, the real standout was when we got to the castle. And I remember we got, this is the first time we lost Boots and Kelton. That definitely won't be the last, but it's the first time we lost them. So we were all like, should we try to find them? Should, and we just kept going and we got to the, the castle and there was, I believe it was peeking over the water. There was just this bench. And I remember we all kind of just sat there exhausted after the, three hour walk we took. So we had a van all to ourselves. One, the travel agency gave us one van for the the small crew we had, which is really nice because we all pretty much had our own rows to ourselves. I think the way we traveled through Ireland made for a lot of reflection 
and there was more than enough space for all of us and so it allowed us to be together when we wanted to be and talk and engage um, but also to just like take time and be on our own and um, I really enjoyed, I, re I distinctly remember traveling through the countryside and listening to music and journaling um, and just seeing like the beauty of nature um, and having the time to to be away from school and the regular schedule that I keep offered for a lot of self-reflection and allowed me to really internalize the experience. So having our own van was like awesome because then we got to kind of pick up and go where we wanted to. And then we had Sean, our bus driver, who kept everything entertaining. <laughs> um, so it was cool like driving through all of Ireland, looking out the window and seeing like all the rolling hills, the like classic sheep that you would expect to be there. Um, and then we would pass by like castle after castle basically and all of the like bodies of water like it was just beautiful at every turn and um, when we weren't sleeping it was a <laughs> good sight to see. Sean is the absolute pillar of every old man you've ever read about in a book. Like everything that you perceive and understand about little old men Sean is the incarnation of those things. Okay, welcome to Ireland. It's nice and wet. Small drop of rain, some sunshine. Let's enjoy ourselves. As we were driving down the streets though, we soon learned that our driver and a few others were not as friendly as we were accustomed to. There was a lot of yelling and pushing your way through the traffic. The Irish drive with an aggression that I was not prepared for. So I learned very quickly not to look at the road and to trust in my savior. They just are very aggressive when they drive and very fast. And I was, um, no, I'm neither of those things. So I was not prepared adequately. Definitely one of the highlights of the trip. Ah, oh, the Cliffs of Mower was one of my favorite days. I remember it being really cold, and I kind of regretted my choice of apparel that day. Oh, and that was the day where I walked in on someone in the bathroom. Oh my word, I hope he doesn't remember that. I was the one. Before we departed, because we knew we were going to separate different ways, uh, Booz and Kelton told us, you know, we have like two hours to go do what we want. And so we decided, you know, we want, we want to go hike the cliffs of Moor. You kind of begin, and if you stand at one end and look at the other, it really doesn't look like that long a walk. You think it's maybe a mile. But as you begin this trek, um, it curves and folds along the line of the cliffs. We just kept going and it was getting windier and it was like starting to rain a little bit and the walkways are like so narrow that like only a few people can fit, like one person at a time. And we got down to <laughs> this dish where the wind now just hails on top of you and it's like stronger wind than I've, I think I've ever experienced. It was, it was quite fun and I think that's when we were like, you know what, what we're going to turn around, we're going to go back. So. I was in the back, so now that we're turning around, I'm in the front, and I start heading back, and I turn around to see, and everybody but Becca is gone. I'm like, where are they going? I remember we were all standing, talking about, should we go back, should we not? Um, so Brooke and I just start walking, and I find sometimes if you just walk, people follow you. Is it always good? No, but they do. So we started walking, and soon, to my displeasure, I found that that hike was a lot longer than I expected. But I'm being fueled by the knowledge that there's this beautiful tower at the end and I'm gonna go climb it and I'm gonna overlook the Cliffs of Mower. Um, that did not happen. We made it to the end and it was kind of anticlimactic. There was this old structure and it was closed off. So we couldn't even, we had to observe it from a distance. But, uh... We didn't want to go back. <laughs> like, that didn't seem like a fun task. And so we saw people like walking around this like corner and like near like roads and towns and stuff. And so we're like, why not? Let's just go that way. Like, I guess in unison, we were just like, well, 
why not? It's probably shorter, you know. And so we end up taking that route and, you know, we're walking, we're talking. And we're then, so we come up to a bus stop and we're like, oh, okay, this is great because this is taking a lot longer than we anticipated. And so, you know, we're like, okay, we can wait here at the bus stop. And then we realize we don't have any money. Although we come to find out that someone in our group did have money <laughs> that did not speak up. <clears throat> I won't say any names. And nobody had euros except for me. I came prepared. I exchanged my US currency for euros and I was I was prepared. But I, I you know I need to save my money for the point where I do need to use the euros. I thought we only had See, this, this gets even more confusing. There is, none of us had cell service. I think Becca was the only one who had cell service. And so she was pulling up this GPS on her dying phone. And it said maybe we had 30 minutes left. To me, I was like, you know, I could walk 30 more minutes. And we reach, like, so close to the end where we could see, like, the Cliffs of Moore, the main center. And we hit this main road. And... Like, it was like the light at the end of the tunnel, and we were so close, and then it just went dim. Because <laughs> there was no way we were going to be able to walk that road, because it was so narrow, and there was cars going both ways, like, nonstop. And so we ended up calling Miss Booze and being like, hey, can you pick us up, because we don't want to die today. <laughs> And we waited a while at this curb and everyone's just kind of like laughing at us, not asking how we're doing or if we need help, but it's fine. <laughs> um, and so the last minute we're like, okay, we just gotta go. Cause it's been a while. We were all hungry at that point, kind of tired. You know, we're starting to walk right on the edge of the road where we definitely could have had an accident, but we saw other people doing it. So we were like, that's the smart decision, right? If other people are doing it. <laughs> and so we started walking, and then at that time, we saw Sean, good old Sean. What a comforting face to see down the road. And so we saw, you know, his not so smiley face <laughs> coming down the road. <laughs> your attendance. My name is Mark Helton. I'm a professor of communication studies at Evangel University. And Evangel is a small private university with around 2,000 students in the Midwest part of the United States. Uh, we're from the state of Missouri, which is pretty much right in the, in the center. So for the conference, we got there pretty early. We had to be there by 9 a.m. And so our hotel was actually really close to where the conference was at. It was on a campus of a university. And so we walked over there and, you know, we're ready. We're all looking fine with our, you know, dressed up clothing. And so we enter the main building, which is where everyone was signing in. And we all kind of look at each other and we have this moment where we realize there are a lot of older people <laughs> at this conference. And going into this conference, we expected for this conference to be undergraduate students, you know, college age, younger. And when we were at the registration, it was pretty much, you know, people in there. It ranged from 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, the whole skew. It was so different when we got there than what I thought it was going to be. So I primarily thought we were going to be amongst undergraduates. That was not the case. There were masters and doctoral students primarily, okay, and I'm clearly an undergrad, okay. And later we found out like we were one of the only like undergrad groups that were at this conference, which was like a really big honor. Um, and so like the first day we go into this conference, and they have like the startup meeting where you just listen to all these speakers presenting on like media and communications and 
they're all like getting their PhDs or have made like some significant gain in like their field. And so uh, after all of that, they had these breakout sessions. And so there's a leader who would lead the discussions and everyone went around like introducing themselves and we're like, oh, we're from Evangel, like we're undergrads and we're like coming here to present. And uh, so then they just kind of like started all of this discussion about like media and how it's like transforming in today's world. And it was like a really kind of, it was an awesome experience because it's not like what I went in expecting. And one in particular, one guy, he was awesome and we got to talk to him afterwards. And he basically just talked to us and said like, hey, go back to your schools and soak up as much knowledge as you can. And he was just super encouraging and uplifting. So the morning of our presentation, we like got into the, the center and we found our room because we really wanted to set up right away. And so what Ms. Booz and Professor Kelton were like telling us was that like they had been spreading the word that we were like undergrads that we were presenting in this room. So like we expected like a lot of people at that point. And we got all of the technology working, which was like the main concern. <laughs> we had all of our um, pamphlets and everything. And we just kind of like waited around that morning. We kept practicing it to make sure like we were good to go. And we worked all of our information together into a PowerPoint and a handout so people can learn and have take something away from with them after the conference. And I did personally, I did the workshop element because we wanted to interact with people. So I created a fake news Twitter feed where I put these different types of business information into practice and showed them how that it could affect them even in their casual social media scrolling. And then like it became time to present and we had like our person come in who was going to announce us and everything. Um, and there was only like a handful of people in there to listen to us and we had like this pretty big room that could have been filled with like 40 people. And so we start the presentation with a couple in there and eventually like more and more kept coming and then we ended up having like the, one of the main speakers that presented on basically like our topic as well that morning uh, come and watch us and then the lady who was running the whole conference also came and so we went through the presentation um, Cecilia and Brooke basically led that and then Sam led some discussions and activities and stuff and it all went really well. We had like open discussion about Q and A's and stuff. So there was a lot that was going on, and a lot that we got out of it. And then after we were done presenting, we had a lot of people come up to us and like compliment us on the presentation, that they were glad to see us there and that we were like getting involved in the discussion and everything. Trips really have a way of bonding you, and especially for that length of time that we were going to be together. Um, and it definitely did. Like, I would not change anything about our group at all because it was just the perfect dynamic. Just all of our different personalities, and it just meshed so well. And we had no issues, no conflicts. And so it was just enjoyable. Like I think everything that we did with our group, you know, we all pretty much had the mindset of, okay, we're just open to what we're gonna do today. And it was just like, it was a very cool dynamic where we never had any issues. Like there was never any drama or anything that like a normal trip would experience, especially like for 10 days, like that's a long time. But everyone got along, we all had like, good conversations we're constantly like oh let's go do, go do this and that and so like that's what I loved most about it is like I felt like we could have all just stayed there and been fine <laughs> like we would have been content because we got along so well um, but basically like that trip was it was an awesome experience and I'm glad that I got to go on a school trip with Evangel because I had never done that and being like my last semester was my last opportunity 
And to be able to go to like this conference and say that we presented in, at Bonn University, which is one of the most prestigious schools in like the world, um, and learn from all of these people, like I couldn't have asked for a better experience. I, I've enjoyed them a, a lot. That I don't think I'm as opposed to trying new things and to going on these different experiences and delving into these different cultures and taking, taking a couple risks here and there. Surprisingly, I think the strength of our group lied in the fact that we had five distinctly different personalities. Um, but that almost made for a really nice mix where there was just, there was no competition. So people could play to their strengths and acknowledge their weaknesses, both in our presentation and just in our traveling style. And I'm, I learned a lot about five different people that I really didn't know much about. It was really nice to peel back the layer of surface level interaction and get to see people's hearts a little bit and see their motivations um, and to get to do life with them in this, in this way that will be permanently inscribed into just who we are and our experiences because we were all getting to experience something at the same pace and seeing how that experience was different for five different people was so exciting. Um, so I, I really count it as a privilege to have gotten to go with the group that we did. Um, I think it was really beneficial and I, that was especially played out in the presentation um, that each person was really allowed to do what they did best and it made for a final product that was really impressive to the um, people at the conference.